other thing. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the week one of the Tiger Mind League Report podcast here at TigersMLReport.com. I am and it's Chris Brown and Brandon Day of Bless You Boys will be joining us here momentarily. And, um, yeah, we're going to be talking basically, I mean, we're, we'll be breaking down the rosters a little bit. Talk about the first weekend of baseball, too. You tuned in from earlier. We did a nice tribute to our former colleague, John Claus, who tragically passed away. And we did a little bit. Of, we talked about him a little bit um, on Friday as well. But uh, we want to go to Motor City Metrics podcast, and we did a nice tribute to him. So tip of the cap to a, uh, a great, great, just, 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 I mean, it was just, it was a great guy, great person. And um, great. Great guy, talented, really talented kid uh, uh, in, in a lot of ways, and uh, uh, it was it's it was an honor to know him, and he's he's gonna be missed. And uh, like you said, you know we we could we could probably eulogize him every show for the rest of the year, but uh, you know I, I guess onward we'll, we'll do our best. We won't forget yeah. John, obviously, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best to to kind of continue what we were doing and what he helped us grow. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that, I mean, the, the growing the Tigers, we were a little late because the Tigers won an extra innings, five to nothing. Carson Kelly with a grand salami as he continues to be a, 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 a hit, if you will. And it was one of those things that he's been talking about in camp. And uh, Brandon Day, hello, Brandon. Hey. hey, boys, how we doing? Doing good. Just uh, good talking now? about the, the the Carson Kelly hype that was, <laughs> was there during the – spring training that was just because like those two as uh throughout throughout spring training he was hitting the ball really hard his he was healthy and it yeah. showed and yeah, on that pitch, the wrist the wrist is better apparently yeah, yeah. and uh, speaking of wrist though although unfortunately josh young fractured his oh oh i didn't see that yeah that just yeah. uh came up on the twitter timeline so Don't three break. run bomb. Thank you. Sorry, OBK. Yeah, Thank three you. run bomb. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I said that salami. right before Javi came to bed. I was like, it's Grand Salami time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping <laughs> for Grand Salami from Javi, but, you know, I, I was just hungry. <laughs> <laughs> the sack fly yeah. was good. The sack fly was good, yeah. and he didn't strike we'll out. And, get. Yeah, it was going to say, that, and he didn't embarrass himself too much, but uh are now 4-0, but the offense was lacking. I mean, but also at the same time, it was kind of a little lacking in Toledo, too, and that we'll get to that as well. As the Mud Hens open up a series starting tomorrow in Iowa, and the minor leagues, the rest of the minor league schedule gets off, goes, gets going on Friday with Lakeland starting the season at Dunedin. Erie will start the season at Harrisburg, and West Michigan starts the season at Lake County. No, I feel like that's all wrong about that West Michigan schedule. No, you're be. right. It is at, at Lake County. Yeah, it sure. is Lake yeah. County. Okay. Lake County, who, who, by the way, still does not have streaming. No, they do. Their... They do. They oh, added they do it last now? year. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember I was tweeting out about like, oh, well, I would show you stuff because they don't have streaming. And then Dan Hasty messaged me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's the streaming there. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> That's where Brady Allen started hitting bombs to the opposite field last year in the Lake County. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of the prelude right now. You know, we went down to Toledo opening day again this year. And it was, it was a surreal day in many ways. Um, but you know, we got to see Matt Manning pitch, which is, uh, I'm sure not what he wanted, but, uh, you know, he, he, uh, went out there and, and did really well. Uh, honestly, it was, you know, one mistake, uh, that went 450 feet. But other than that, it was kind of a continuation of what he did in spring training. He was, he was mixing in the fastball and the sli- uh, sweeper, getting swings and misses with both of those. And then, and then adding in a couple other pitches, um, didn't get any swings and misses, I don't think. He maybe got one with the slider, and then none with his, his uh, ch- split change or whatever. But, you know, it, it looked like, at least we were speculating early on, that they, that maybe they were having him work on the sweeper and slider because uh, he really seemed to be throwing those a lot early. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was good to see him go down there. Like, this is what we kind of expected, but what he needs to do, right? He needs to go down there and shove, and uh, at some point he'll get another chance, uh, you know. We just, and he uh, does really need really, does really need to learn to pitch a couple different ways and like you say like throw throw the slider throw the curveball you know figure it out if you get hit hard for a while that's fine um we always you know you know he can go back to the fastball if you want to and the fastballs 
you know, looked a lot better this spring um, than it has in certain times. So, I mean, the slider has as well. You know, there's there's quite a bit to like in what he did this spring. It's just um, just a freakish of no injuries. <laughs> I don't, nobody even wants to talk about it. You know, um, yeah, it's yeah. just a really odd odd scenario where you're like no one got hurt and you're just like, oh, we've got too much pitching. That's weird. So we'll see how long that holds up. But um, yeah, Toledo's you know obviously got a pretty pretty stacked rotation of their own as does Erie. So. Plenty yeah. of coming if we need it. And I was just going to say that the biggest thing, and we'll get to Erie's roster in a second, but the uh, the biggest takeaway I had too was the fact that Toledo this year, bullpen wise, too, has uh, it's not just a hodgepodge of whomever, uh, veteran wise, too. I mean, we did Saturday was an example of seeing Wilmer Flores, who AJ Hinch has mentioned that's going to be throwing at least three innings. But again, this isn't another, we saw this again, we saw this last year in Erie. He kind of bulldogged his way through that. He didn't strike out anybody, and it looked like he had a hard time commanding his slider. I mean, it just he wasn't. He had a he snapped off a few curveballs. I was talking to Colin, who was our our intern out there, who was talking to talking to me during the game. He said about 96, 97, he sat, but wasn't really. He got the two strikes pretty good, pretty effectively, but it was just he had a hard time finishing hitters, and that's where he ran into trouble. And and her. Herter made his first triple A appearance. Didn't wasn't bad. Maybe it was the nerves. Maybe it was just like that. But it was one of those starts too where I'm not really I'm not really again, it's the first start. I'm not concerned about it. But the defense behind him all weekend. There was something about the, I, I thought the outfield, especially Friday, Chris. I mean, in, in Brain, I'm not sure if you saw any of the game Friday, but a lot of times the outfield was an adventure. It was just a, a uh it was one of those things where you'd think it was like a normal fly ball to the left or fly ball to center. And I don't know if this, maybe it's the sun. I, I don't know what the hell is going on, but it was an adventure just to say yeah. the least. Yeah. And of course Herder comes out and, you know, like walks a guy, hits a guy, you know, we just don't see that much of that out of him. So maybe that's just a little bit of early season, you know, nerves or, or just not being real sharp. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it was a very un Brant Herder looking performance. I would, I it reminded me, um, you know, the, his the middle of the outing, he settled in. He looked like he was going to do his thing for a while, and then you know, kind of lost the plot again. So, um, and again, like you guys say, say with Flores, he's probably working on something. Um, so, especially this early in the year, so maybe, maybe that's uh, the cause for him being a little bit wilder than normal. Yeah, with with the uh, herder, it reminded me of when he first came up to Double A Erie in 2022. Uh, he had a couple outings there. It's it's. I remember it distinctly where he would he would just have issues with like his landing spot. He he'd be always looking down at his landing spot and like I don't know he, he like he's normally a guy with with pretty good command. He works the edges and stuff, and then sometimes it just completely yeah. le leaves him. And yeah, that's what happened. Like you just say, a couple wild pitches. I think he hit a guy or at least one guy, and, and uh, just not normally the the type of pitcher he is. He was giving up hard contact. Yeah. I think he got one swing and miss the entire yeah. outing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, he is a big, tall guy too. He's got that, you know, that issue like we talked about with Wentz. Although Herder's controlled it a lot better um, over the last year or two, but you know, really long limbed, long legged guys who are six six. It's tricky. So trickier than for other guys, anyway. And and uh, and both his velocity and uh, Flores's velocity were down slightly from what we saw in in spring training, and maybe that's just a you know. The weather, it wasn't particularly warm on yeah. Sunday in Toledo. Although, uh, you know, Montero seemed to be just fine with his velocity on Saturday. Yeah. Manning was down like just a little bit from spring. Mm -hmm. Not not a lot, but yeah. Yeah, but you're right. Montero was pumping 97 pretty much whenever he wanted to. Looked really and good. Montero, I, I'm so excited for Montero this year. I really think he's going to be a difference maker. And he was dealing, straight dealing. He, I, 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 didn't think the rust he didn't look rusty at all he came out there and was hitting the strike zone very effectively and, and the biggest thing and you guys can attest to this last year a lot of times he he got in these long innings where he he pitched a lot he was trying to i think he was trying to feel himself his way out of situations yeah but that slider command was chef's kiss yeah yeah. And he's got both both breaking balls kind of working with a little bit more horizontal now, both of them, you know, a little bit more slurvish and, and sweeping, um, whereas in the past, sometimes it would be, you know, one or the other or, or really inconsistent. It, it's starting to feel like he's got those two separated, you know, starting to command them more consistently. And, you know, he's he's got a pretty good change up now, too. Um, I, I was really impressed with him last year. I, you know, I've kind of been a big booster of uh, Kiter for a long time. And, 
you know, 2022, I was kind of starting to like, eh, okay, okay, I can kind of see the reliever angle. Um, and then, you know, just a lot came together. And whether that was, you know, getting his development plan in Spanish or just, you know, refining some things that, he, that he'd been working on all along and just came together for him. Um, it looked a lot better. You know, he still, he still has his times where he's, you know, he's outside the zone and, you know, a little too careful maybe sometimes or isn't comfortable throwing his secondary pitches in a certain situation and tries to tries to power his way out of which he's not, which he's not really that capable of um he can but um but you know you don't really want to see him just leaning back and pumping 97 98 at guys um at that level too much um, especially in a jam jam so yeah it's just learning to pitch a little bit more him and um and being a little bit more consistent and yeah that's that pretty pretty darn good start especially compared to a lot of the other guys so yeah all right, so uh, Paul, with the, Paul, let us know that Blanco threw no hitter versus Toronto. Oh. Hmm. Ronel goes. Blanco. Oh wow, that's is he one wow. of those? Is he is he one of those, another Houston starter that it, that cost he's, him a hundred? He's thirty and he's got twenty five career games in the big leagues. I I honestly don't think I've ever heard of him. I've just heard the name. I know nothing about him. Um. But yeah, to see so, some weird stuff. You know, I don't want to tell the you know say the Tigers are going to just turn it on when it's hot, but you know, you, you kind of see this sometimes early in the year. So, yeah, yeah, it, it's uh, you know, I was I was thinking that we we're going to get a fourth straight one run game, and then they yeah. unfortunately had a couple big hits there, and and it is it's like a double edged sword with the Tigers right now. We're a little bit worried about the offense, but it's it's hard not to like the pitching right now. Yeah. Aside from you know, Maeda had a rough outing, but uh, and, and you know, Flaherty wasn't commanding the ball terribly well, but the results are results. So, yep. Yeah, bank those four it, wins. Yeah, there's a take, take advantage also, of some not great teams early in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what the what what the Braves were blowing out the White Sox earlier it was like nine nothing earlier. Or something yeah, they, to that they, they won nine nothing, and th- th- there was the clip of the White Sox came back on the field without a first base coach, <laughs> and they were like <laughs> they were yelling like the game was paused because they didn't have anybody. Yeah, it was uh, the White Sox are yeah. Pedro Griffal just yelling, "I ah, do what you want, you bums." <laughs> Basically. <laughs> But you know, we, we talked a lot about the the Toledo pitching because it was uh, you know the first two games were pretty good. Um, offense down there, I think Raj, you touched on it, wasn't particularly uh, you know explosive, but they did pick up a couple of early wins. Yeah, and that's where I, I, I think I think the biggest takeaway that we have is that Winsiel Perez is still a, a damn good hitter, and he that first hit he had on Friday. No, no, I'm sorry. It was a, I think it was the second one where he kind of golfed it and just barreled mm-hmm. it and put that it. That was a triple. That yeah. was a triple. Triple, double, and then he had another triple, I think, Saturday he had a triple. Yeah, yeah he had another triple yeah. Saturday. Right-handed. Wins, yeah. Right-handed, and he played right field for the first time. I, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. I don't think he ever played right field in the near year. Right? He was in center field he, mainly and left. I thought he may have played right in Toledo Maybe last year. Um, I remember we, I we thought I mean, it might have been center. It may have been, I, I don't know. I, I remember he has a good arm, right? Like, yeah. He's one of the, he's a confounding player because the physical <laughs> tools are all there, uh, and and it yet you know can't make the throw from second base to first base to save his life. <laughs> yeah, phys- so. phys- physically, he looks like a shortstop. Like if you just saw yeah. like you know saw the all the tools individually, but but um, yeah, never, never gone that well. But um, yeah, I mean you know ever since he kind of kind of broke out, he's been he's been swinging a lot better bat and showing that power. And um, yeah, that one he golfed out there, you know that's. That's the kind of thing where in the past he would have just hit a weak chopper. Um, he was able to, you know, really get down and leverage something there and still smoke it to the wall. So, and he can run. So, you got to like the uh, the tools he guys here, especially as you know what, what the Tigers really need is like a star. Like they need one more like kick ass position player, preferably a shortstop. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you know, like as you're, if you're looking at the Toledo Mudheads position players as like a supporting cast, you know, Wenzel that probably will have a role to play. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him at some point this year. Yeah. Especially if they, if, if there's, you always look at the outfield as a concern with Riley green. I mean, there was a Riley green made a play on Friday. It was, I think it was opening day where he was diving in the left. I'm like, ah, no, 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 yeah. no, no, no. And he's like holding his left arm up. Like, look, yeah. I didn't break it. Yeah. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> oh man. That was, that was scary. Yeah. But, uh, you gotta love that he just, just went back out there and dove right away, though. You know, it's just you know, kind of one of those <laughs> ball will find you kind of kind of situations. Um, you know, <laughs> he's just such an odd player. You know, like Riley Green, it's like he runs on his toes. You know, he's got like such a a weirdly flexible lower half that shows up in his hitting and his gait and everything. He's just he's just kind of odd that way. Um, you know, and he's always had you know average speed ish somewhere maybe a little bit above at times. Um, but he's just kind of a funky 
funky bodied cat, if that's a, <laughs> a phrase <laughs> that I can coin here. He's just kind of odd. So, yeah, I remember when we first saw him at West Michigan, where he was kind of like, remember how he's creeping up? Yeah, but you know, you watch him on the bases and he looks like he's hurt, you know? Yeah. yeah. It, like, I remember in West Michigan, he's kind of like creeping around, like on his balls of his feet. It was really weird in center field when he was yeah. skinnier. Yeah. I think we, yeah, I, I used to always compare him to like he runs like an old cowboy. <laughs> He does. I know. He's got he's got those those wide open hips, you know. Yeah. Like um, Scoobles got, but uh, yeah. But uh, Scoobles got a yeah. lot more cake in the in the pantry, but you know. Yeah. The uh, and then the, we saw, um, you know, Malloy. I think had a couple hits and a double, and and Young ended up with a double, and, and Dingler hit a home run, which was nice to see. Uh, his only other home run at AAA, I think, came off a, a, a catcher last year, so it's nice to see him get his first real AAA home run. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the offense, it, just like Detroit, right? It needs to heat up a little bit. Sunday was uh, was not a good game for, for any aspect. So, uh, but uh, you know they usually hit really uh, well out in Iowa. So uh, hopefully uh, that'll help wake them up. Yeah, yeah. And the so tomorrow tomorrow starters, Chris, you had the starters, right? I couldn't remember. It's uh, it, Brian Sammons, uh, who is a veteran lefty, I believe. Um, and then Wednesday appears to be a bullpen day. Of some sort, and then Thursday it's Manning again, and then Montero Herder, and uh, I assume Sammons is, gets the double duty this week. Uh, I don't know what they're like if they're really rolling with a four man rotation in Toledo right now. I'm not entirely sure what how that's going to rectify itself. Yeah, we kind of wondered about what you guys thought about Flores because I mean, yeah, he, he you know he looked like he was supposed to go like three or four innings, but I couldn't tell. I, I didn't look back to see when he did an outing, and otherwise he would have been like scheduled for Monday technically, and it just wasn't going to work that way. So they just kind of got him in there. Or do you think they're actually trying to get him comfortable being more flexible in his role? I assume it was just the, the former, but I don't know. No, yeah, Roger, didn't you hear, I don't know. Where did you hear something about like, they were going to get him working three inning stints? Uh, AJ Hinch mentioned it. Yeah. That Hinch okay. was talking about oh, okay. using him in three inning uh, spurts like that. So, hmm. uh, and it was the case too, where he, he pitched two and, one thirds innings, I think, the other day on Saturday. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. And um, yeah, that's that's where it kind of it, it makes sense. And I think that I, I, I'm, I think they're not entirely convinced that maybe it's, I, I thought they would use him as a reliever or, or like a straight up closer. That's what I thought that was going to happen. But then I thought about well, I mean, they they also have the likes of Devin Sweet back there who can close. Toledo's got a, a, a couple guys that can. I mean, trying. Uh, Trey, actually, you know what? This year, for, new for new. Uh, pronunciation, I pronunciation guide. guide. I have the pronunciation guide. Hell yeah, I have the pronunciation. Oh yeah, guide yeah. Here. So you know, if they're going to bring in, uh, wing wing enter, then wing wing enter, uh, wind enter. Ah, or <laughs> yeah. I, I still can't even do it. <laughs> you know, I, I have the damn pronunciation guide, yeah. and I can't. F and do yeah, it. Yeah. It is wing though, right? It's like wing yeah. enter. Yeah, yeah okay. wing, 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 enter. wing enter. Yeah, wing Trey wing enter. Wing enter. Okay, so yeah, and then the uh, I, I love to see when if Craig Pacheco will actually make an appearance because if he can come out there, but the ba the back end of the bullpen is just you know even guys like was mentioning even was uh, Mason Engler. I mean Engler can oh, yeah. be even close too if you want him to because he's he's got that kind of funky delivery that could throw guys off. Although it was weird to see Blake uh, Holub pitching for Nashville. Oh yeah. And we saw a former friend, former friend of the show, not really, but uh, Nolan, uh, Nolan Blackwood out there as well. Oh, he was yeah. out there? It was out yeah, there I, Saturday. I, I thought he was out of baseball. Oh, I I didn't, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they've got Brisky, they've got Drew Anderson. Got options. Yeah. Brisky, Brisky was hitting 97. Pretty good. Yeah. 97. Yeah. He was pumping in there. Although Chris, I mean, if, Correct me if I'm wrong. He was having a hard time locating his slider, right? Yeah, he was. Well, it was his slider, and his, he was having a hard time locating in general. In that he he worked two innings. I was kind of surprised they had him work the eighth, and and it was. I think he loaded the bases. Yeah, with maybe one out, and uh, got out of it. They had they had, yeah. Nashville left a lot of guys on base in that game. That that Engler uh, had had the same sort of issue where he loaded the bases, and then I think with nobody out, and and he was managed to wriggle out of it. Um, I think he struck out the side almost after that, right? Or like two of them in a pop-up. Two strikeouts in a, in like a weak pop-out to, uh, like, I think it was, and maybe their best hitter, but, um, yeah, Brisky, you know, you, 
you know, that's what I think Hinch talked about earlier about like, you know, relievers nine, 10 and 11, um, they're going to use them too. And, and that's, you know, it's risky right now. And, and uh, yeah, I think the slider is still going to be his distant third pitch, but he was using it, um, you know, spotting it in there every now and then. And then the, the change up fastball combination is still pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice to think the slider would get way better, but that's, it just doesn't seem like it's in the cards. Yeah. 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 There's a, I don't know. It's, I, I love to see when, hopefully brisky becomes kind of like that uh they decide to use him more as late eating option versus like a six or seventh eating option because i think he's better suited for that because just because his demeanor out there but we'll see how the yeah. tigers use him so let's go to erie and so wednesday so by the way wednesday is the uh, wednesday's erie's media day i'll be out there for that and west michigan's media day is going on at two o'clock and so we'll be out we'll be splitting duties so jerry will be out there on Wednesday, getting some press. Uh, by the way, props. Uh, uh, really want to give a shout out to Lynn over the West Michigan Whitecaps, who's now responsible for media. Really has done a really fantastic job of taking care of her media passes and all that. And we're going to have Zeke Jennings write an article that's going to be coming out tomorrow morning, uh, previewing the Whitecaps. But the Erie Seawolves, you're defending Eastern League champions, and they come in with a rotation that's veteran laced i guess if you want to say it and but also has got probably the best arm in the system in jackson job and we kill hernandez will make his double a debut he'll be part of that rotation along with ty madden lyle lockhart jr and trey melton who also may make his double a debut and let's talk about this rotation gentlemen um the biggest thing i mean i know ty madden people thought he might end up in toledo but because of roster crunch that's why he's near and that I don't think that is a demotion either. I think he this gives him really an opportunity to carve up, continue to carve up some more hitters, to get some more uh, attempts against lefties where we saw him struggle a little bit last year. But I thought he was getting better. But I'm I did a report on Lyle Lockhart Jr. who was telling me that he essentially is adding a sinker hmm. to his pitch mix, and so he's been working really hard this offseason. So he, he learned a splitter when he got here. And he is a guy who I'm I'm intrigued with, only because he could be a swingman. And like the if if you really think about it, lefty wise, he could be you could. I mean, I know Brant Hurdler is probably ahead of him in the curve in, in that department, but he's a guy who could be more used as a bullpen swing guy than a starter. But either way, I think this yeah. rotation is going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, they're loaded. You know, they're not loaded with lefties. So yeah, Lockhart's going to get plenty of chances if he's, you know, if he's sharp and has his command dialed. And you guys kind of clue in on him last year. I wasn't paying him any attention, uh, but that was it. Was actually a pretty impressive finish, I thought, from him. Um, and then yeah, you know, I'm a huge Troy, Troy Melton fan. As far as I'm concerned, Melton's probably the second best raw arm in the system. Um, you know, and and I expect him to to grow a lot this year. He's still really raw. Um, still really only has pitched, you know, like three seasons, you know, basically like his junior and, and senior year of college and was just kind of figuring out, figuring it out then, but has uh, plenty of talent, um, pretty big breaking ball, spins everything really good. And then, um, yeah, Jackson Job's just a, just a dang monster. Um, I am curious to see what, you know, wilco has been around so long, like you just, you just start to forget him, but it, he's still got two good pitches. <laughs> so um, I don't know, you know, and it's, it's kind of hard to bet against the Tigers player development system at this point um, as Wilco, I think he's what 24, maybe just about to turn 25. Um, so, you know, this is probably kind of a do or die year for him, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if he turned into a, you know, a relief option or something like that, if they could just dial him in a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like he's been around forever. I remember when, yeah. when I was speculating on the, the rosters before the season and I had him back in West Michigan, it was like, it would have been like his fifth season there because he was there when, yeah. uh, way back when, when it was low a, um, yeah, it, it's, it's an interesting roster because they only have four of, of our top 30 prospects, but it's like, you know, three of the most exciting arms. Um, yeah. And then how you Lee, which was, was kind of shocking to me yeah. that he got promoted there, but uh, you know, th there's been an infield crunch too. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, they sent him to the AFL, so maybe it shouldn't have been that, that shocking, but yeah, it's going to be, that's going to be real tough for Eastern league hitters to, to get that, get that Job Madden Melton uh, trio on the, on the weekend or whatever. You'd be like, Oh man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a long bus ride after and, that one. Yep. And, and yeah. And then that's uh, like, you know, you don't want to forget Lyle Lockhart who, uh, yeah, he, he was outstanding last year. He, just, just tremendous. And he's a guy who is really, really speaks 
the pitch design language. Like that was one of the things that when we, we talked to him, he was he was telling us like his exact uh, you know, VAA and IVB yeah. and all that stuff. We're like, oh, all right. <laughs> so he's he's way into that and bought in and, and he's a guy who's gonna get yeah. the most and out of it. And I noticed Troy, you know, Troy Melton was another one who like all of a sudden yeah. is like super conversant, you know. Yeah. Like all these guys yeah. are really conversant and all that now. Whereas for years it was like, you know, they'd ask Matt Manning about his stuff and you know, you could just tell, like, it was just like, you know, it, it was nothing there. No offense to Matt Manning, but yeah. it took a while until, until they really started getting through to guys and, um, you know, getting them educated to the point where they could explain themselves what they were trying to do rather than just like, you know, they tell me to do this. And so I do it. So, yeah. But, and and I, I want to, I don't want to speak for Raj here, but also, um, you know, I, I mentioned that they don't have a ton of, of our prospects, but there are a ton of veterans here. And actually I forgot, I think Chris Myers has returned there. So that gives them five, right? Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, th there's a ton of experience, uh, a lot of veteran players there. It wouldn't shock me if they're winning a ton of games again because uh, those guys yeah. know how to play. Yeah, at that level, that's a that's a pretty deep group of, of players. Even if the prospect talent it doesn't look mm -hmm. all that great, you know, and you know they've got Troy Cruz, Melton, and Myers are both fairly professional hitters for that level and have some pop mm -hmm. and stuff. So yeah, I, I could see it working out and um, and them be pretty competitive because that pitching staff um, sh should win them a lot of games as long as those three guys can stay healthy. Yeah. What, what, I'm, what I'm interested if they stay and there's, there's a couple guys too. There's a uh, Calvin Coker, Coker rather Coker mm -hmm. and Blair uh, uh, Calvo. Calvo. Yeah. Oh, Calvo yeah. that come in there. Joel. Uh, Peguero. Peguero. Yeah. Peguero. Bryce Taston, who I, I thought I honestly forgot he was oh, in an organization. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm not sound, I'm not trying to sound cruel. I just I, it's just kind of right there. And then the the Tigers are obsessed with Rockies players. All of a sudden, they signed <laughs> a guy by the name of a PJ Pollen, who's a lefty, who will be. You can never again, never have enough lefties. And the Tigers also signed a catcher. They really didn't do a big announcement about it, but uh, they signed a catcher by the name of Stephen Scott, who was from the Boston organization the system has got four or five guys that are just battling injuries right now. Mm -hmm. Alfonso still recovering. Um, Alonzo uh, Rubicata is on the 60 day DL. So he's going to be out for a while. And then, yeah, this is, but the, the, what a the big story that I'm actually looking forward to. And I'm going to try to ask, see if I can get a, a, a couple words from him is Andrew Navigato who come, who comes back from a grade four se shoulder separation on a really horrific injury last year oh, yeah. against Jeez against Bowie, where was it was stupid. Akron, I think. I, th I thought it was Bowie, wasn't it? No, I thought it was Bowie. I thought, I thought it was Jose Tena of Akron. I thought it doesn't oh. matter, really. But, yeah, doesn't uh, matter. No, 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 you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I, I would have sworn it was somebody from Bowie for whatever reason, but uh, you're, you're probably right. Um, That injury sucked. I mean, he was having a really good year. He was hitting out 280 with power, and he, talking to Greg, and the staff and, and Gabe too, that he is a guy who's kind of like the leader of the clubhouse. And they, I thought they would really ch change the course of the season, but it just continue to step up a little bit. And among the infield group, we talked to uh, we, Jay Colton, who we might have thought started the season Toledo and I'm, I'm Gage Workman. Yeah. I, I, I mean, gentlemen, I'm not, I want to believe that Gage Workman is going to be something. But it's it's just strange to see him back. And Daniel Cabrera too, same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Workman, you know, Workman is just so tantalizing for the tools. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, he's he's kind of clinging to a thread this year. I don't I don't know how much longer they they keep him in the system, but I don't know. Plus speed and power is just hard to let go, man. <laughs> Especially if you can hit left handed. And a good glove on the infield, right? Like yeah. like it's everything, but that that hit tool and it's in and unfortunately it's a like a 40 percent strikeout rate in his career in double a or like 38 39 and, and it's you know you get that down to 30 even and you, you've got yourself some hope but um yeah it's it's yeah. it's tough tough to project there for him but uh you know you don't want to give up on a guy like that necessarily because sometimes it does eventually click it's just it's it's pretty rare yeah i mean if he just turned into like keston hira but could play shortstop he'd be like fine that's fine yeah. <laughs> we'll take that all day yeah, you yeah. can strike out thirty five percent of the time. We don't care. It's yeah, a thing. Yeah, yeah. If, if you're if you're striking out forty percent of the time in Double A, you're going to strike out about sixty percent of the time in the big leagues, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's uh, just got to yeah. get that down. There's a yeah. You know what's funny is that we have six hundred sixty six watchers right now. So I get that number down really it's, well or up. Yeah. So we have a, a satanic number. Um, no, but TJ. By the way, TJ yeah. Hopkins takes over the Diego Reconis role of former San Francisco Giant outfielder 
for the Seawolves <laughs> this year. Yeah. As uh, I wonder if that's going to be a continuing theme. If we're just going to have well, a former San Francisco Giant outfielder in the system, I don't even think Hopkins was with the Giants for that long. Wasn't was he? Was didn't he like? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't he with like the Reds? Second. And then yeah, the the Giants picked him up. But yeah, it's it's you know they're backfilling with some some minor league veteran guys, and he was on the forty man briefly, and now he's in Double A, and that's not not the best sign. Um, yeah. But. Uh, you never know. Like a guy like that, you go down there and produce, right? Like that's that's the name of the game. You go down there, you, you play well, you hit, and suddenly you can put yourself back on the map. Kind of feels like a little bit like the Giants thing is like, you know, I've got guys I can call and find out, like, is this guy going to be anyway? Like if he's not, you know, we just want someone bills, you know, and we can we have people we can ask about him and find out about his makeup and we'll just go with him. <laughs> that'll be yeah. fine. Maybe that's where the, the emphasis on, the, on that comes from a little bit. And, that, you know, that'll wear off, you know, Harris is – Harris doesn't know anything about the Giants now. We're not going to claim Joey Bart, are we? No, we you, know, uh, just gonna, you know, we're just talking about, you know, what's funny is somebody, oh, okay. is somebody, my, my bro, somebody, I think my brother asked me that earlier on a text and I was like, why? I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I could see him doing it, but yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't expect it to go anywhere, you know? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like, you AJ, know, I paid a ton of another catcher to like beat into shape just for fun. <laughs> I, I think we, we all paid a ton of attention to that 2018 draft because the Tigers had the first overall pick and, and there was some thought, kind of a brief yeah. thought that like, hey, maybe Joe Bart's the guy, you know, he sounds like a great team leader and he had all that power and uh, there were yeah. concerns about the swing and miss and the hitting ability and unfortunately those those came true and uh, he was passed defensively by Patrick Bailey and, you know, it's, uh, it's a tough break out there, man, but you know, catchers stick around for a long time. So I, I'm sure he'll catch on somebody or somewhere and, and maybe in the minors, maybe in the majors, but just probably not with Detroit because they've got a pretty good situation right now. Carson Kelly, three run bomb. And uh, yep, yep. he's really uh, maybe not all that different than Dylan Dingler, honestly. And I would, I, you know, don't yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't need that. Ex ex except for defensively. I mean, yeah, as a hitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and the Steven Scott thing, you know, like, you know, left-handed bat um, seems like a pretty solid, you know, experienced catcher i don't know if he's if he's got the the skills that aj hinch would ever you know let him catch for the tigers but um but you know putting a left-handed bat down there and working with the guy is is fine um you know if carson kelly or jake rogers was a lefty masher we'd be in great shape right now we might be in pretty good shape anyway though so it's not like yeah. but yeah it was, it was funny because i went i reached out to a couple people for if steven scott confirmed because i have a maybe one or two people in the org now i can I, a message but i don't I, I i'm lucky if i get a response only i think it's just out of like i'm still relatively new to asking people for stuff so i still have to figure that part out but it was that's what i'm like did you guys sign steven scott nothing so i'm like okay well, yeah, apparently and then i just waited to that but the tigers did sign another arm let's get to west michigan another dodger arm in the form of uh, Connor, or excuse me, I'm sorry, Connor was saying Austin Murr got traded to the Astros. I was really looking for the confirmation. You guys see that? He he didn't. Uh -huh. It it was um, it no, was in the either. the minor league transactions where it said Austin Murr. Um, and it didn't even say traded. It said uh, what tr transferred or whatever to the FCL Astros. <laughs> I think it it was just a typo. Um, I I don't, I don't think it was uh, uh -huh. anything. I think he's basically on the development list or whatever the hot and ready list. I believe is is. Rogers calling it. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 somebody, somebody told me that that that's what they're calling it, and yeah. that's that that's they're, that's what they're calling it eternally, the hot and ready list. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Brandon, I, I, yeah, you didn't hear, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, he was a guy I thought that might be there back in West Michigan again, but uh, you know that uh, he's a valuable guy to have around, but I, apparently they don't feel like he needs uh, you know a priority development anymore. Yeah. So, so yeah. Looking at the West Michigan roster, so they did sign uh, again another former former Dodger in the form of Carlos De La Santos, who was pitching last year for Great Lakes. And again, it, I, I, I when I saw the name, I'm like, who the, I asked Chris, like, who the hell is this? Oh, because <laughs> um, yeah. I never. I mean, like usually with Dodger prospects. You know, you, you hear some sort of buzz on it, but he was pitching. He did pitch in the Dominican Winter League. Um, was part of was also part of a Ranch Cucamundo. Is it Ranch Cucamundo? Am I saying that right? Rancho Cucamundo. Rancho. Yeah, yep. Rancho. Yeah, Rancho Cucamundo. Yeah, the that. So, uh, luckily for us, we have the ability to 
this is what he was again. I, I only said this name because I just the t- the rest of the staff were familiar with, but was, this name popped up out of nowhere. I just thought I wanted to check out what was he able to do, and, and I'm wondering if the Tigers found something where they're like, okay, we're gonna identify this and just weaponize this guy. Um, because this is one thing that the Tigers have been able to do the last couple of years. It's just take a pitcher and make them better. So we'll see. Oh, that's not bad. All right. That could work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fan says has 55 fastball, 55 slider on him. So ooh, definitely ooh, a relief, ooh. relief prospect. Ooh, there, oh, there, I can see that slider there. All right. Sweet. Yeah. Um, but uh, anywho, so that being said, I just wanted to, uh, yeah, kick off. Let's just kick off looking at the West Michigan, who, by the way, I think have a better pitching staff. Then I think the team, like a lot of people will give them credit for. Let's start with the starting rotation. Carlos Pena, who led the Midwest League in ERA, comes back to lead the rotation. Dylan Smith, who I thought may have started in Erie, will be back at West Michigan, maybe because of a, a roster crunch. One of my favorite, yeah. you know, you talk about your, you know, you, you ride your prospect train, uh, Brandon. Mine's going to be the Jaden Ham tour. Yeah. I'm all about yeah. I'm telling you, I, I think I have a really, really good real vibe Easter ham. Yeah. Real Easter ham about Jordan ham. <laughs> um, and, and then the rest of the rotation yeah. is a, this is where like, again, I, I still think it's kind of. Got Marcano. Man, yeah, Marcano. Yeah. yeah Carlos Marcano. Yeah. Let's talk about him a little bit there. Yeah. There's some projects there with the big sinker. Yeah. Yeah. Mar- Marcano is a guy that we've, you know, he, he's, he is uh very young still. He was. A starter in Lakeland two years ago as, as an eighteen year old, I believe. Till, he doesn't turn twenty one till July. Yeah, I think we determined he was the uh, youngest pitcher in in Lakeland uh, in Low A at least since Joel Zamaya. Um, at least oh, the really? youngest to start oh. a game down there. And yeah, he's a guy who he gained a little velo last year. He's got three legitimate pitches and uh, his athletic delivery. Um, I I may look forward to like a, a bullpen future, but there's. Yeah, he's a, he's an intriguing young guy. Um, I don't know. He's kind of physically maxed out, but. Uh, then I, you know, I thought Kyder Montero was kind of physically maxed out too, and then he found more velocity, and 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 so, um, yeah, a fun name to follow. And and actually, you know, I kind of like their bullpen. They've got some really fun arms in the bullpen. You got Marco Jimenez who throws a hundred. Yet Josper Sanchez, who's yeah. kind of a, a deep under the radar guy that we saw a little bit in the uh, FCL in in Lakeland last year, who throws upper nineties with a pretty good hook. And mm-hmm. you got Tanner Kolhap in there too, who's uh, you know, one of the uh, more intriguing arms in the system with a. Uh, a two seam fastball that's like 2700 rpm yeah <laughs> yeah tough arm angle nasty yeah. kind of kind of slurvish slider um didn't he he just came back in the afl he he was uh i think in the second half I mean, of last he, season he i think he pitched a little pitched. bit at the end of last year yeah. too so yeah you know so yeah and then you know like colin fields just has kind of weird numbers to me like i don't know if he's any good i haven't really even seen him i think i saw him pitch one time but, um, you know, has kind of like this weird high spin cutter at like 90, 91. Um, can spin a breaking ball, too. Might be a relief relief possibility there as well. And uh, and Jerry pulled out, you know, when, when we saw Max Alba was on the uh, the spring breakout roster, we were like, oh, that's interesting. And so Jerry dug into the numbers. And, yeah, there's there's some interesting stuff under the hood there, too. So, yeah, there, there, there could be a really fun bullpen down in, in West Michigan this year. Yeah, yeah this, I'm really curious about have... Dylan, Dylan Smith as well. You know, like we, we kind of mentioned it, but Dylan Smith, you know, suddenly kind of was hitting like 97, 98, not with any consistency, but he did throw pretty hard in the AFL compared to anything we'd, we'd seen from him before. And he does have a slider. So I haven't given up on him. Um, you know, I've, I've still got him in the twenties, I think on our list somewhere. So um, yeah, I'll be curious to see him as well. Yeah, What's going to be, I, I, what I'm interested in seeing is a, a pretty stacked infield. I mean, you're talking about an infield here that has Max Anderson, uh, Abel Bastanis, who will be, I mean, that's an international guy who, and we looked at the Tigers let go of quite a bit of international talent here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we'll get that here in a second. Luke Gold, Peyton Graham, who, uh, when we, we had Ryan Garko on, he was discussing him making some strides. Looks like he's healthy. Uh, I always say Andrew Jenkins, because I always say like Leroy <laughs> Jenkins. Um, but uh, <laughs> Isaac Pacheco coming back. You have Carlos Mendoza and Danny Soretti. After spending some time in Erie last year, Max Anderson Luke, too, right? Did you mention Max yeah, Anderson? Ma- Ma- yeah, Max Anderson and Luke Gold. It's, but it's what what what's interesting is, um, for me at least, is looking at the fact that we're the, the versatility of putting. I mean, do you put Anderson at first? Do you put him at second? I mean, there's there's a lot of position versatility with this group. 
Yeah, it seems like Gold's kind of settled in at second, but they still move him around. And um, I don't know if Graham is going to be like the everyday short stuff. I kind of assume so, but yeah, I'm I'm guessing. But, um, you know, they may they may play with that a little bit, yeah. And then Pacheco obviously is going to play third mostly because I don't see him much else. Did he play first at all last year? No, he actually played some shortstop last year. Um, he did. Well, yeah, I saw know. a couple, but I was I assumed that was an injury or something. You know? No, yeah, I don't. It was it was strange when they're having. A, you know, he's he's too big to do that. But in in yeah. high A, you can get away with that um, still. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would imagine he'll play third base mostly. I think Anderson will play second and first. I think Gold will play second and third. I think it's getting late early for Bastidas. You know, he was kind of one of my picks for a breakout last year, and it didn't happen. And and when you see a guy like this yeah. get, you know, after his performance get bumped up to, to high A, it's like, uh, you know, he's getting the, uh, I don't know, there's a, any number of players who had this kind of treatment, the Alvaro Gonzalez type uh, player who you, you just, he, he's going to start one game a week and pinch hit and pinch run and stuff. Yeah, yeah, just not much much else going on there. What about Danny one... Danny Soretti just kind of doing it all, just doing whatever is required of him? Yeah, yeah. I think he'll be yeah. second. He'll be short, third base, second base. Uh, yeah, who knows? It, it's yeah. He, he's another. He he like Josh Crouch. Uh, got the taste of of double A and uh, found it uh, not to be terribly delicious. Too spicy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, it's been tough for those guys up in double A. So veterans and and good players, but. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the playing time shakes out there. Yeah. By the way, I totally forgot that Cole Turney. You guys remember Cole Turney at all? He was the undrafted guy last year. He's like 25, 26. Yeah, yeah. He he will be he'll be in the West Michigan out, outfield along with Roberto Campos and Steph Stevenson for new manager Tony Capacilli, I think. Capacilli, who Capacilli, yeah. He's Capacilli. Spent, Capacilli. Kept I think so. Yeah. Well, didn't he correct me if I'm wrong? Wasn't he with the organization last year in some capacity? Was he, uh, he in was. Toledo, a hitting coach in Toledo or something, or a first base coach in Toledo? I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I have it here somewhere, but I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> that's a, I think he's got three C's, two L's, and two I's in his name. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Two P. Yeah. Oh, two, two P's. P's. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. lot of double letters in that name. Yeah. C A P P U C C. I L L I. Yeah. There's two of everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, we talked about Turney before because he was he had that really interesting story where he was at like three different schools and ended up in I want to say like a D three school that Mark Connor's from. I think it's Mark Connor went. Um, oh yes, yes, that's, okay. that's right. It was um, what's that school? Cumberland. It's, it's or, something like that, and, and he, yeah, he Cumberland, you know, yeah. He, he had one of those like absurd junior college stat, uh, like batting lines. It was like you know hit like six forty with thirty five home runs or something like that. It was like all right, settle down. Um, oh, I wasn't Capitelli. Capitelli was the Tigers catching coach last year. Uh huh. So he That's swapped roles with with um, Cienko is up now. Yeah. Swap roles with Pena basically. Yeah. Yeah, and Capitelli was. Uh, I think he just retired like a couple years ago, and I think he what was it the Triple uh, A Tacoma Rangers or. Rainiers, yeah. he was yeah. the man. And I drove like right after he retired, so he's kind of done a few things already. Yeah, it's a veteran. It's a veteran group down there, and the uh, they're bringing in uh, another a, a, a former uh, familiar face in Daniel uh, Dan Rick Rick Rickaball, who was there last yeah. year, who did a really good yeah. job. Very good coach. And you look at West Michigan last year on paper, you kind of look at him and go. They were competitive. Like, we were kind of figuring out how they were able to stay competitive, but they were getting really good pitching towards the end of the season. And we saw, I mean, they everybody pretty much ended up at in Erie with the exception of Pena yeah. and uh, there were, Hernandez. There, there were yeah, a lot of unfortunate promotions toward the end of the year for, uh, you know, it was good for the players, but it was kind of rough for the teams. You know, they, they, Big B was raking and they sent him out of Erie and Brady Allen was the huge part of West Michigan. They sent him to Erie and, um, but you know, it's, it's, that's life as a minor league manager, right? You, you don't, you have no control over your players really much. Yeah. But um, not playing, not playing for your title, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, in, in Roberto Campos, yeah, like Tyler Montero, uh, triple A, catch all year. He's going up. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, can't, uh, yeah. Montero went up three levels like Bigby did. Um, but yeah, I, I was just mentioning Roberto Campos. Like we haven't given up on him. He, he had a rough season last year, but for the first couple months, he looked really promising, and then it kind of went downhill. And, and so you hope that uh, he can turn around. Still very young, so yeah, he knows what to do. 
hit yeah. the damn ball in the air, kid. That's all you can do. You got to do that. So, yep. If the Tigers replaced their third base coach with a windmill, would anyone know that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joy, Joy Cora already taken some fire. <laughs> the chat. Yeah. It gets excitable. By the way, Joy Cora, it was early mornings in Lakeland watching him do the fielding drills, fielding drills with the, with the bat. Yeah, with the bat. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, you're sitting there and there'd be a couple times where it come right by the fence and Hitch would look over at us like, <laughs> like, like, we're all like... <laughs> so the one thing one thing we know about AJ Hinch um is he's a bit of a control freak. <laughs> um at least with his assistants, and, you know, the coaches, they don't not allowed to talk to anybody or whatever. And, and I think that he Joey Cora, I think is probably coaching third base the way AJ Hinch wants him to, which is to, you know, we're going to tr struggle to score runs at times this year. So just send everybody basically. Yeah. Especially uh, in that game, you know, I mean, he yeah. was only out by a hair, you know, he kind of had to push it. Nimmo is accurate, but he doesn't have like a big arm. The one the other day was horrific, but today that, that's standard practice in a close game. You just, you just push it, you know, but push it there and hopefully they, you know, they miss the throw. So. Yeah. There was the, today, today was a, a good example of, the cards just lined up right for the Tigers in that game. I mean, it was just, it really was. I mean, against Sean Manalia, too. I, I don't know. The Tigers always do that against lefties for, for some strange reason. It's just like that random lefty will get him once in a while. I mean, yeah. Sean Manalia, when he's good, he is good. And he's so, really keeping that front side closed a long time. Too. Yeah. It looked like he had a lot more deception than he, than he used to. Yeah. I mean, he used to be like 91, 92. And, um, but yeah, it went LOL Mets at the end. You know, they just kind of just, yeah. just puked up all the place and just coughed that game up really. So it'll happen to us, I'm sure. Well, no, and I mean, I'm sure it, it, the Tigers, I mean, I'm really saying 162 and 0, but we all know. But uh, so as far as let's go to Lakeland. Speaking of which, tomorrow our, we were recording a pod with Kevin McGonigal. Fingers crossed, oh. hopefully. Oh, nice. And um, so <laughs> knock on wood on that. So uh, hopefully that will be the case. And it will kick off our interview series for the year. But the like, Flying Tigers pitching staff. So you look at the you look at the staff. It was kind of the same as last year. Where you go like you look at it and you go, eh, I mean, there's mm, in, intriguing arms. I mean, out of all of uh, all the you know, you can sit there and look at it and go, well, who who stands out? Who's a guy who would maybe might be you know? It is good to see Rainer Castillo. Who we we were really high on last year and the year before. It seems like we've talked not because of his last name, obviously, but um, or maybe that was a little bit of it. But I mean, <laughs> this is this is year four of him. This is, so this is his fourth year in the system. He's only nineteen years old, so that's why oh, I wow. wanted to mention that. So yeah. he he turns twenty in June, and this is year four for him. And we didn't really. This will be the first time that he is above rookie level. So. Yeah. Um, we've got to watch for you, yeah. Yeah, and, and, go ahead, Chris. Well, we were just kind of like, mildly excited about him because he was one of the few times that they've actually spent money like a decent amount of money on a pitcher. And he was a big bodied kid. And we actually, I remember finding video of him from like some perfect game events and stuff like that. And uh, and we could probably go and dig up some stat cast data from him last year, maybe, uh, maybe not, yeah. but uh, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there because, like, you know, like we we're saying big, big, strong kid, and um. The, yeah, the, it's the big arms aren't there. I mean, that, I guess that's the, that's like my first takeaway about Lakeland's, you know, rotation is that, you know, you know, Paul Wilson, Blake Dickerson, um, Janik Diaz, those guys are going to be <laughs> in extended spring training and, and doing the complex until they get there. So we're not going to be able to see those guys. But, you know, you've got Donya Evans, um, Ham, and who else was there? Mitten? Like out of the draft class. So there's a few of the draftees yeah. there, at least. A couple Mitten, of them. Mitten and Sears, I think, right? Oh yeah, seriously, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah there's it, Chris and Williams then Bruce, as well. Thomas Bruce, who will you know, yeah. is uh, an interesting little story. So. Yeah, Jeff oh, yeah. Jeff Potts from Baseball America had uh, you know tweeted that out. I don't know if it was today or yesterday, and 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 our buddy Brian noticed it, and and I retweeted it. It was a big bodied guy who was throwing some nasty stuff down there. It could be interesting to watch. It's a new era now where, you know, like guys from their training camps are just posting reps or, you know, or whatever Hawkeye yeah. or whatever data they're using and, you know, and, and just getting signed that way. You know, like, you know, you're just kind of auditioning online. And, um, you know, we've seen that a few times now, but he did look pretty impressive, um, you know, kind of kind of a little bit along like the Drew Anderson line, although Bruce, I think, is like 
yeah, he's like he's six eight. He's a big, yeah. he's a big boy. So um, yeah, you know, just just continuing to to pluck every guy you see out there that's interesting and and not wasting roster spots as as little as possible on on guys that you're not going to develop that are just going to be or guys and you know we've seen that that process over the last few years um even under abila and much more under harris where you know we'll, we'll just keep moving you out and finding guys that we can use and you know we're not just going to have guys just hanging around here you know for four or five years in the upper minors being or guys there's there's just going to be less of that and they're going to keep trying to claim and pick up guys that they could work with and test out. So <laughs> just, yeah, that's, I mean, he's just going out there just yeah. gas. I mean, he, he does look at, he kind of looks like Jason Foley if, from afar mm -hmm. I mean, with the hair. Oof. Yeah. What are you Better do breaking that? ball though. Yeah, well, so. Foley's coming around. No <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. He is. Yeah. This guy was, it was pitching in Minnesota. He was pitching indie ball, right? Yeah. It was, yeah. Frontier want, League, I think. Yeah. yeah, Frontier League. Yes, you know what? Great reference there, Jabez. Rod Beckhair, former <laughs> – rest in peace, Rod Beck, who one point lived in a trailer behind the minor league ballpark he was pitching at. That's how – the legend of Rod Beck. I mean, this guy – whoa, that was a nice pitch, too. Um, yeah. Anyways, I could watch this guy pitch all day, and there's guys like that that will be down in Lakeland. You know, we were talking about this earlier. They – another arm, too, that's intriguing among that – set as well is uh you mentioned him just now brandon and that was uh don Bay evans who I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him uh ulysses campos who is going to be yeah. he starts the season on the il so hopefully you see him at some point um but you'll chris you're talking about uh yos bear sanchez correct i mean we've you've talked about him a little bit before yeah it's, isn't he in west michigan or is he in uh well he's gonna be he's starting the season oh. in Oakland. Yeah, okay well, yeah. i thought he was in west michigan i'm sorry yeah no he was uh, um he was a guy that we randomly saw on, on the FCL, and yeah, it, it was it was like ninety seven to ninety nine with a pretty damn good curveball, like a sharp curveball, um, but some some command issues, control issues. He's yeah. a guy that they they got from another org, um, sure. but uh, yeah, it, it was just an interesting arm, and, and you know, if he can throw strikes, that he can move quickly, uh, based on what what we saw in, in small glimpses. And I do think he got up to Lakeland at the end of last year. So, yeah, Maybe he able did. To yeah, look up his data. Yeah, he did. He jumped from uh, Dominican to uh, oh, Complex man. League, and then yeah, the walks have been a problem. But there's yeah, there's a really good live arm to that with with, with Sanchez. And you were talking about the bull and bull, and then there's the it was Luke Stoffel. Luke Stoffel too, right? That was a guy who was a holdover from last year. I want to say. I, yeah, I believe he was an undrafted was free agent yeah. guy. Yeah, I spent some time in West Michigan. He didn't really, he didn't need a lot of time, but the infield and catching. I mean, the Jose Paseño put himself on the map during the um during the futures game, and this is yeah. where I was talking about the injuries. Bennett Lee's out. Uh, Sergio Tapia out. Injuries for the catch on the catching side. Eduardo Valencia, who was a guy who. Another in intriguing catcher. He's got to hit up a little bit more, but he's put himself out there. And it looks like Clayton Campbell is going to be moving to the infield now versus seeing any time behind the plate like we saw last year. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's uh, Christian Santana. This is your this is a make or break year for him, guys. I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like I'm being drastic when I say that, but I think it is a make or break year for Christian Santana. No, I definitely. I I, I mean, I would agree. He's still, you know, he's obviously still young, but um, the the you know, it was just such a brutal, brutal, brutal year last year. Um, he, I thought he, he was a lot better, you know, late in the season. It looked like he, he had kind of started to tame down some of the swing issues, um, driving the ball a little bit more. But um, yeah, I mean, discipline and tons of pop ups is not uh, the way to, to make a living, young man, especially if you're not a, not a center fielder or a shortstop. So um, yeah, things have got to turn around there. You know, I, 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 I love him. I, I kind of want to hang in there and, and give him another two years if, if it takes, but you're probably right that if it doesn't start happening, you know, much faster this season, um, that that's, that's probably not going to work out for him. Was McGonagall on this list too? Cause I swear I looked at it and he wasn't there. And I was like, Oh, he and Clark are both in the complex league. This is nonsense. <laughs> no, they're both, yeah, they're both, okay, they're both I feel better. Yeah. I was just like, what's going on? But this is a couple days ago. Yeah. You got, you got McGonagall, you got, uh, Santana, David Smith from last year, Jim Jarvis, a lot of a lot of infielders taken last year. You also have Samuel Hill, who was an interesting wow. kind of uh, 
I've always compared him to like Sergio Alcantara. I think he's a glove first guy who can hit a little bit, just not much power. But yeah, it's, it'll be interesting that like Santana's the old man there yeah. now. He's going to be mentoring Brasengo yeah. and Clark and McGonagall. Um, <laughs> but it, I mean, there's yeah, there's he, a lot of potential. All those Peck, guys. The veteran shorts out. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. It'll be fun, and, and we're going to be able to see him see those games. Uh, not quite sure what kind of broadcast angles we're going to get. We're hoping it's the same one as the spring breakout because that that at least gave us uh, the behind the pitcher mound, you know, view. Yeah. I have a feeling maybe it's just going to be the one from the press box, but uh, that's better than nothing, right? Uh, it'll still give us a view yeah. of Max Clark's first home run. Yeah, well, they, uh, Lakeland has a play-by-play guy too as well. We're supposed yeah. to be talking to. Yeah. Yeah, I got to recontact when, when, him. When, guess right now, when does McGonagall uh, move up to West Michigan? Were you guys surprised that he was still in Lakeland? Because I kind of thought he might be the one that they're just like, all right, you're, you're good. You, you, you can handle it. I, I, think, I if think if he wasn't, if he was healthy, I think he would have been there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they'll they'll do the traditional. Um, I mean, we talked about this with people complaining about Max Clark being in low A. It, it, that's just what happens with high school players the year after they get drafted, like almost yeah. every time. And if they're really good, they move up quickly. You know, Holiday moved up in like two weeks last year. I, I don't think McGonagall's yeah. going to do that, but it wouldn't shock me if he's one of those dudes who's up by uh, the all their, like their all star break. Right, like yeah, June. Then the Tigers have revamped this entire complex down there. They've got the, you know the whole shebang working down there. They're going to put everyone through the crash course at Lakeland for you know in their first full season at least for a while. So yeah, everyone can probably just get used to that. But yeah, you would uh, you would hope that they'll move quickly. Yeah, and Connor brings up a good point too. A lot of cold, especially sure. the cold weather bats. Yeah, I mean, right, cold weather high school bat. Yeah, you don't really want to just dump them up there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's and they got all the bells and whistles down there now. They spent all this fancy money on all this fancy stuff. You know, you can't just send yeah. these guys out to West Michigan in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we got a question from Deadly Ninja Bees, and I re- really like this question. You guys have covered the system for a while. How do you feel about the system as a whole, Brandon? Take it away. Well, I'll go get a ginger ale real quick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you guys are more in depth than I have, but maybe I've been do- doing it longer. I mean, what I mean. I have to like kind of block out the early years because it was an absolute wasteland and almost anything felt good. You know, like those years from like 2018 to 2021, 22, it was like, oh, wow, this is great. There's, you know, prospects all over the place. But what you see now, like I was saying earlier, is that they're they're, they're just doing an even better job as far as like just, just trimming out guys who aren't going to make it, picking up and claiming guys from all over, you know, keeping keeping the tentacles out there and picking up as many guys as, you, as they can. So like the, the lower end of the system – stronger and then th- there's just a lot more actual prospects you know we've talked a little bit about um at least you guys and i behind the scenes like you know west michigan and, and erie kind of have you know a little bit of weakness in the actual prospect department other, other than erie's rotation but you can see the next wave already uh, already starting when you get down to you know parts of west michigan and lakeland um and and that's that's encouraging i don't want to get too stoked because just because the tigers took a lot of prep talent and managed to sign those guys doesn't mean that there's going to be this massive wave, you know, coming right after the one that we have at, um, you know, AAA and LA right now. But overall, I, I mean, I feel infinitely better. I mean, you know, I, I have tons of like almost too much confidence in their ability to develop pitching. And, you know, you just need a couple, couple bats to keep, to keep developing. Um, you know, obviously Clark McGonigal are kind of the, the two, the two biggest guys, but, you know, Bryceino as well. Um, you know, there's a few others out there, but overall, I feel good, and I feel like they got that way in such a strange fashion where they had actually drafted more talent than it looked like and then finally got development right, you know, found all these guys. And now, you know, now maybe, you know, in the next year or so, we'll start to see, like, what the Harris side of things looks like as opposed to just, like, the Avila with the Garco, you know, cleanup and polish <laughs> system that's gone on the last two years to suddenly turn out all these these good players. So, I mean, I feel very confident the Tigers are going to churn out pitching now um, for a while to come, at least until like the whole paradigm changes and some team, you know, however, takes it to the next level. The Tigers should be developing plenty of pitching. Um, You know, we still need to see what goes on positionally. I don't want to get crazy because Kerry Carpenter found a good hitting coach um, or, you know, swing coach or, or getting too excited about that. They're still going to need Max Clark, McGonigal and those, those big guys to produce, um, to, to, to kind of take this thing to the next level and have like a wave three. If we look at, you know, Spencer K- through Casey Mize as wave one, 
you know, the, the guys we have now, wave two, and then, you know, you're looking down in the, the lower minors and hoping that those guys will um, will turn it around and that the Tigers something in the international free agent market. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Chris is really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a nice uh, prospect coming there, hopefully. So. Yeah, next year. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would echo a lot of what Brandon said there. It's it, This is among the deepest systems uh, for the Tigers I can ever remember. Um there's not necessarily a ton of, of like, you know, superstar talent. There are a few that, that really have that. Right. And that's always yeah. going to carry the system. But like, like Brandon said, like you look at Toledo, this is probably the best, like the most talented Toledo roster I can remember. Erie's pitching staff is, is uh, really exciting. And then, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of a, um, you know, you don't want to be mean, but like we said, there's not a ton of prospects there on, on the offense in Erie. And then it's a little bit iffy in the pitching in West Michigan and Lakeland. But you got it really exciting infield prospects in, in both of those places. And arguably, like in, in Brandon touched on this earlier, one of the most exciting position groups in the entire system is going to be that group of arms in the complex league yeah. where you've got Paul Wilson, you've got um, uh, Andrew, Dun Andrew Dunford, uh, who was their 12th round pick Good. last year. You got Blake Dickerson, you got Jank Diaz, you got four of the giant yeah. young power arms. Um, yeah. And, and that could be the next wave a couple of years down the road. These are the guys in Erie that are dominating. Now, you know, baseball's baseball. Some guys are going to get hurt. Some guys aren't going to work out. Um, but the, the the main other thing we've seen in the last couple of years it, in, is is just a lot of guys getting better. Yeah. And, and uh, not everybody, right? There's there's always going to be some people taking steps back. But we've seen enough guys get better over the last two years to, to think that it's going to happen with some people this year, too. So yeah, I'm excited about that. And I, I think the... The system's in a good yeah. uh, And like you touched on earlier, going through Lakeland's base. list of pitchers, like it's like guys you haven't heard of. Yeah, it's like guys you haven't heard of, but they all have data. You know, like there, there's no mm -hmm. one where you look through their stat cast numbers and just think like, you know, what what is this guy doing here? Um, you know, there's a lot more guys that at least have one pitch, um, some attribute you can see developing. So it, it's just a lot more easy. It's just easier to see the plan, um, you know, coming to fruition and, and what they're trying to do. And the Tigers, I, I think another thing I like is that they haven't really gotten locked into like one type of guy. Um you know, for a long time, we, we, we talked about like the Astros and Rays, you know, up and down, wipe out breaking balls paradigm. The Tigers have never gotten locked into any one of those things. And mo most of the better teams are starting to get beyond that anyway. But um, yeah, th there's just kind of a wide variety of guys and they've had success with a, with a lot of different types of pitchers at this point. So yeah, that, that leads to some confidence that that's going to continue to. And Carson Rucker mentioned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, even, yeah, there's there, there is some bats in the complex league to get excited about. But as far as I look at the progress of the Tigers minor league system with a couple names that may that I don't, you're going to sit there and say, well, how does that how does it translate? There's teams that are signing other Tiger former Tiger minor leaguers, <laughs> yeah, and that it sounds like a stupid thing to to analyze here but let's let's rewind it back let's rewind this back a little bit okay yeah look at Jonathan scope he's mm -hmm. he's in mexico <laughs> look yeah. at daniel lugo he's trying to play baseball there is been significant progress with the pitching development enough to where i mean oakland took a a flyer on i'm trying to blink all of a sudden on his name and jack o'laughlin yeah. yeah yeah and that to me says something because he was a guy who came out uh, out of nowhere. I mean, you remember last year his descent, and he was he was starting the season at West Michigan, unassuming. I mean, he's back with the A's in the minor leagues, but I mean, he had a. I mean, his numbers in spring weren't great, but still, the point is, he's a guy who found his way on another roster, and that's starting to happen a little bit. You're starting to see guys that the Tigers have developed. And that there's a, there's a certain plan to it. The, the, yeah. the pitching is there's a there's certain Lockhart mentioned that everybody I talked to last year, Herder learned a changeup. Connor's you know, point, like, yeah. Yeah, so what? Got, so, Connor's point got Mark Cannon for Blake Holla. Blake Holla was like a 12th, 13th round two way player yeah. from a Division two school, and they yeah. turned him into a really damn good reliever, and and uh, you traded him for for a big leaguer. Um, yeah, Rebus is down there handing out splitters, handing out cutters yeah. to people. You're seeing that come along. Yeah, old Lachlan, you know, he he didn't do anything for you know. I mean, they they signed him when he was 16, but he just he was just there for you know almost six years, and then all of a sudden he was throwing 94 a little bit, 
and the slider was a little better. And yeah, all of a sudden he's a guy as a lefty that other teams, you know, can see that they can use. The Tigers might actually have real 40 man roster decisions next year. And that's, you know, that that's kind of like the, the marker of like, okay, this is a consistent, you know, development, not juggernaut, but you know, a, a good system that is continuing to produce. So yeah, I think yeah, it's, my, it's all very encouraging. I hope they pay Ryan Garko. Or somebody gets him. You know what they well, should do? Yeah. Like literally they, you know what they should do is tell Ryan Gar give Ryan Garko whatever he wants. Give Ryan Garko whatever yeah. he wants. Give Gabe Rivas whatever he wants. Robin Lund. Robert Lund. <laughs> yeah. Robert, yeah. Give Robert yeah. give Robert Lund like a lifetime contract, leave them like a, like give them some sort of stock or something in Little Caesars or something. Whatever you gotta Maybe do. We could we could do nil for pitching Mike, coaches. Um, yeah, Michael Michael Burder, you need to do better. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, the hitting coach. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm gonna grab a drink. I'll be right back. We we even mentioned, um, you know, Andre Lipsius gets claimed by the Dodgers. You know, one of the yeah. strongest organizations in in baseball. Right? They they don't hurt for developing prospects, and they found enough to to like an Andre Lipsius. So. Yeah, things things are moving up in that garden, and, and, and uh, you know, Brandon mentioned it. Yeah, like they're going to be some, they're going to be a lot of uh, interesting forty man decisions toward the end of this year. We we counted what did we count like eight guys who could potentially get added to the forty man, um, and some of them have to be, and some of them don't. Like we, Jackson Job doesn't need to be, but they may. Same with Jace Young, they might yeah. just push their way up there. So, I mean, I, I look at it this way. I look at the development. Sort of gives along as an example. He comes over here. Great. With a K per nine at eight, seven and a half, eight. He raised it by two and was in the major leagues last year. Think about that for a second. You you did not, no one, no one, no one saw that coming. Nobody, nobody. They got it yeah. from Michael Fulmer. People were like, well, look at his numbers in Wichita Falls and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it was, you know, it was crap. He comes in here and he learns a pitch over the weekend, literally over the weekend. And yeah. becomes like this monster. Think about that for a second. That to me is like a prime example of what the Tigers have been able to do. I feel like the Tigers farm system in terms of pitching, historically speaking, has been awful. Awful. I mean, we're talking, you look at, like, you, well, you think about it this way. You look at the the core of the, the group in the 70s, okay? Jack Morris, Dan Petrie, you have... Uh, Dave Rosema, there's a couple other guys. Beyond that, you go in the 80s, nothing. I mean, you're talking Kevin Ritz. What? You're talking Scott Oh, You're it. talking guys, all-time bad guys, Chris. Yeah. And well, they, they developed nobody. Nobody. I mean, no offense to was, those guys out there. Yeah, I mean, you had you had uh, Justin Thompson, right? And then, yeah. and then Je Jeff Weaver. And uh, then Verlander. That's it. That's it. Yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Porcello and yeah, I mean, but there was like again, it was few and far in between. Comparatively speaking, the teams, like you think about, like you, you look at like the pitching development teams, like for example, like like the Dodgers. You can go back to you could trace the Dodgers back from the seventies, even the Pirates to a certain extent. The effing Pirates were able to develop pitching, like at points, you know, and even though as as much as like we want to, I mean, the Royals in the nineties with um Kevin Apier and there's a couple other guys like. Mark Gruzia. There's there's a couple of guys like uh, Brett Saberhagen. There's another examples of that. The Tigers for all my all my like all my teenage years, all my kids' life. Ooh, nice. That's a nice choice. Just nice. just just, just wrapping Michigan. Gold. All right, nice. Yeah, it's yeah. good. good choice it. it was you had a founder's solid gold there. Oh, yeah. nice. It's a good beer. Um, I haven't had one of those in a while. But they the Tigers historically speaking have been bad. So from 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 my perspective. To see the farm system develop pitching talent, the talent the way they have been, and then maximize this is revolutionary to me. I know it sounds really weird to say that, but I've never like it's it's. I mean, I I think about the 1996 team in my head. I watched a lot of bad baseball, a lot of bad baseball. That team was awful. That's now one guy. I mean, you're talking. It was you know give credit where credit's due. Randy Smith did whatever he could to get pitching. And they, I mean, they, yeah. they were they're searching all over. They got Masao Kita, their first attempt at a Japanese pitcher. And then they try to get Nomo, and then they were too cheap to send him another year, to the, another time, another day for that story. Anyway. Well, here's the one. I mean, this is the one that just kills me is Justin Verlander. I mean, these yeah. hookers had him throwing a two seam fastball, and they were begging him for more arm side run <laughs> for years. I mean, that went on for a couple of years. Like, who knows how much greater Justin Verlander could have even been. 
if they'd just been like, no, just pitch like Nolan Ryan, just four seam over the top curveball, don't do anything else. Just just Yeah. Yeah. Throw imagine the if they had imagine that if, no. <laughs> they didn't, imagine they didn't the Tigers that. development the Tigers development machine pitching wise was really I don't even want to mention, but on the hitting side, real quick. I'm still concerned about the offense a little bit. I am a little bit because while it is nice to see progress from young, you know, Malloy, you still have a lot of square pegs and round holes in terms of positional wise, because you don't really have a true shortstop right now in their system. I mean, you, you sort of do, but I mean, you're not, you're not talking guys who are exactly going to move. I mean, Kevin, Mc, Kevin McGonigal is a guy that you can get excited for. No doubt. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. I mean, it was good to see a guy like Luke gold, but I still think, unfortunately, the Tigers still have that label of four a when it comes to a lot of these infielders, because I mean, Eddie's Leonard, Eddie's Leonard is great, great pickup, but it has to be done on a major league. I have to see a guy at least for one or two seasons before I can believe in the hitting of this, uh, the, 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 them developing hitting. I mean, Kerry Carpenter is a great story, but you mentioned earlier, yeah. Brandon. Well, they picked him yeah, up, and, picked... He's, and he's one of their best infielders, right? Right off the bat, you know, <laughs> they don't they don't have that many others. Yeah, yeah it's just, but the, as far as the, like Cole Keith, Cole Keith is like Cole Keith's like that the first outliner of like, well, they identify the talent, and then they realize like what they what they were getting with the guy was a guy who was like born to play baseball. That's all he thinks about talking to his mother during that there's a contract. Like his mom, fantastic. Mary's such a fantastic lady, but she was just like, Look, this kid was gonna play baseball no matter what. That's you know, he knew he college. She's like, Fuck college. You're like, Nah, I'm not doing that shit. No way. I'm not doing that. Yeah. I mean, you said I like, I like the line. Yeah, yeah. If I, I can get A's and, and play an hour less baseball, or I can get B's and C's and play an hour more baseball, and I want to play more baseball. <laughs> it's cut and dried. You know, I could do what I wanted, so I'm going to do this. God bless that, man. Seriously. Yeah. Like, just, you know, that's the way I was. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the, the one development story, I mean, other than Kerry Carpenter kind of and Big B kind of being magical, is Parker Meadows. Like, really, like, they really, like, worked on his swing, really worked on shortening him up and cleaning up his hand path and, and got him there. Um, but I mean, I have to agree overall that, that that's that's still the side where I, I feel like I, I don't have I don't have tons of confidence, and, and maybe they don't need that much. You know, maybe they can trade pitching. Maybe maybe you package Madden and Malloy and actually get an infielder. You know, something something like that's got to happen. Um, Scott Harris is going to have to kind of kind of sort those those pieces that don't fit the holes that they're shaped for um, it, along those lines. But um, at, at very least, the pitching is is golden, and the hitting is at least somewhat better like we're seeing you know they look confident at very least yeah i mean that this is the one area the bats where where i i wonder if we're going to see that come through now with their own drafting strategy you know last year was their first real draft that they got to do themselves this this front office um and and pitching is different right like the pitching is so advanced now and you got all these machines that can help you you can you can identify interesting traits because there's a, there's a baseline of pitching talent you need to pitch professionally mm -hmm. Yeah. And and all these guys are throwing, you know, ninety five plus basically. And you don't have to react as a pitch. I can put in and you throw. Yeah. Um. It's and so yeah, they, they may just have completely different metrics that they're looking at and and things that they like. We we talked about last year. They really seem to target guys who hit. <laughs> like they were really like, mm -hmm. let's just get these guys who could hit. Um. And that may be the way they go forward, and and that we may start to see some of that coming. But um, you know, it, it's I don't know. I, I think it's harder to develop hitting in general. Honestly, so it's it's I think it's a, a slightly more innate thing, um, but uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be very interesting to see what they do with that this year if, if some guys can take steps forward. Yeah, and you can't test it. You know, you can't test it the way you can with pitching. You know, you can only see if a guy a guy can hit major league pitching when he's facing at least triple A pitching, if not major league pitching. You know, you can put Jackson Job you know out there against eighteen year olds and he'll be throwing strikes, and you can see the metrics, and you know he's a goddamn monster. There's no, there isn't that, you know, it's much more cut and dried, you know, mm -hmm. like obviously he has to learn how to pitch with runners on base and traffic and, you know, in and out of the stretch. There's, there's plenty of things to learn, but it, but it's, it's not, um, it's proactive. It's not reactive. Hitting is all reactive. So. Oh, you're right. I mean, there's, I didn't really think about the, the aspect of hitting a, a, a object that's coming at you with movement and 99 and all the sorts of stuff is insane i mean it, it, it's you know you take for example even now the tigers are going with high school hitters which is something that they've failed 
they failed on in the past. Outside of Nick Castellanos, I mean, look at Derek Hill. Yeah, Riley um, Green's all right, but I mean, uh, like, well, I mean, well, just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know, no, I, no, I know what you're saying. They just didn't, yeah. they didn't really go after high school hitters that often. Um, and and you could see like hitting so hard, right? Like the, the best hitters in the Tigers right now are all out of sorts. The like green's hitting everything into the ground. Torx hitting yeah. everything sky high. Keith hasn't. We we expect Keith to pick it up uh, after a few weeks, right, or maybe a month or two. We we talk about how he usually takes a little while to adjust, but all these yeah. guys are going to turn it on eventually. But hitting so damn hard, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. and so uh, yeah, I don't know. But but that is something to watch. I think, Raj. I think you, you're right that that it is the yeah. I mean, you see a guy like you know Oscar for two years and falls apart. You know, it's inexplicable. Yeah. So getting get yeah. some more hitters will will help. Yeah. And if we're trading pitching for hitting, I'm I'm good with that. If, yeah. if that's the way this works out, that's fine. Yep. No, I'm Job, cool. Though. You keep your Jackson Job and may, probably Troy Melton too, unless somebody really overpays for him. <laughs> Like the the Georgia satellites once and keep your hands to your damn self on that. So uh, <laughs> I just made a Georgia. I made a ladies and gentlemen is eleven eighteen on a Monday evening, April first, and I made a Georgia satellites reference. So if anybody out there who's watching, who gets who the Georgia satellites were, congratulations. Give yourself a very Horovitz pat on the back because <laughs> I'm even one more obscure on that reference. So that being said, uh, we are going to. So like I said, we have a story coming out tomorrow with Zeke. Jennings breaking out West Michigan. I'll be doing a recap of what the Erie Seawolves look like. And uh, yeah, we'll be out there Wednesday for media day, both at West Michigan and Erie should be blast. And I'm trying to think. So Friday kicks off the season. So it's going to be, we're going to, like I said, our coverage is getting better and better. Uh, shout out to Colin for coming out there on Saturday. He randomly said, Hey, I'm going to the games where I pick up my media pass and Sure, and he went out there, and he had less of a problem finding a seat than we did because everywhere we sat for Friday, <sighs> I mean, was, yeah. well, you know, I mean, they, I think they said there was twelve thousand eight hundred people there in Toledo, and and uh, I don't think we'll we'll run into that issue again. But yeah, sometimes when you when you want to get video from behind home plate, it's a little bit tough on opening day. Yeah, I'm I'm complaining yeah. because I don't understand why people move so yeah. much during the game. Also, why did, when they don't show up to like the fourth inning, you're you're yeah. Yeah. comfortable. You're like what? Come but on. you know, hey, well, we, 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 we all did this to ourselves by pushing that Toledo is going to be the team to watch, you know, like it's going to yeah, be a good time. There's all these players to watch, you know, it's going to be a party down there. Tony Paco's is packed and whatever else goes on down there. So, yeah, yeah, you that's, know what? That's don't kind of how it is. Don't sleep on the spaghetti warehouse, man. I'm telling you, I oh, like yeah. the spaghetti warehouse. That, that place is unratedly good. I mean, I know people like Tony Paco's pickles quite a bit, and like, it's a thing that people will buy at Jarzo, but. Yeah, it's kitty. Yeah, it's kitty corner of the spaghetti warehouse. But don't sleep in the spaghetti warehouse. They have some fantastic food there. It's uh, doesn't look. I mean, it looks weird from the outside, but I think that's the I, the the aesthetic is what people draw to. But they have uh, what was it? What was it Chris the Frogtown Nachos? What was it? The new, yeah, that was new. Yeah, we were we were the first people to get. <laughs> don't tell Mark; he'll be horrified by our. our he, he, for whatever <laughs> reason, he hates that I like liquid cheese. Maybe because it's not a real <laughs> item, but um, yeah, they, it's a new, uh, new, new thing on the Mud Hens menu this year is uh, these Frogtown nachos, which are just you know big fat nachos with all all the fixins. Um, and we were apparently the first two people to ever order them. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Yeah, they can, <laughs> I don't have any problem with the liquid cheese. I just need I just need real looking meat, like not burger. Yeah. I need like some steak or pork or something in there. Yeah, I'm I think good. we this had chicken on it, right? Oh yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah they they actually they came the the woman came and. Uh, talk to us while we were sitting down to make sure that yeah. they were good. Like they, they didn't know if they were doing it right. So, <laughs> and I give her some critique. I'm like, Oh, you could have spread out the toppings better. <laughs> like, Dick. Listen, no, like, no, no. You could have spread the, the toppings more on the, uh, on the nachos themselves. And you know, like a fat yeah. dude, like Ooh. we're evaluators. That's what we, we she's evaluate. like, she's like looking at you. Like, am I being profiled? Why do I have to be the nacho? Expert for you people? <laughs> we're, the, we're the business. We're the business here. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? God. Yeah, you know, if we really want to, if we really want to start a debate, we could we could go to this. Power cannot be can be taught. Hitting instincts cannot. Uh, that'd be a fun debate topic. I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to talk about with that. Yeah, Connor's trying to Connor's trying to start a fight here. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I think, yeah, I think that's probably more true than that. But uh, you still have to have the you still have to have the snap. Um, and there's a lot of guys that they've yeah. tried to teach to hit the ball harder and develop bat speed, and they can't do it. So that's yeah, it's, it's tricky. Well, Esther Ruiz is, is, is back in AAA. It's so hard. Yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, you know, you think, you know, you just, you know, you get the roller, you build up the forearms, you'd be fine, <laughs> but yeah. you can't do it. Some guys just can't. 
So the Tigers tomorrow uh, at 7 o'clock, Casey Mize against Adrian Hauser. And then the series ends on Wednesday with Tarek Skubal against Jose Quintana. And the opening day is Friday. So I'll be out there for, we'll be out there. I'll be out there for opening day. So quite a bit, a lot of baseball to get to this week. And thanks so much for listening. And again, if you like to donate, please donate. The There's a bit.ly, there's a, oh, there's going to be rain tomorrow. So um, by the way, it will be nice because with the uniforms as crappy quality as they are, I'd rather not um, <laughs> deal with that because fanatics, man, screw you. I know, man. It's so bad. And the Yankees ones the other day were just just horrific. Like Carlos Rodon, you know, looked like like it was just going to just melt right off of them, you know. And uh, I'll, I'll have the guest bedroom I'll cleaned up for you guys next time, too. It'll look better. You guys <laughs> oh, sweet, today. yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at the background like, oh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I just wandered Don't in matter. here. I was like, oh, that's a podcast. Man, whatever. I've never cleaned up my background in like four years. So it's <laughs> Yeah, I, I got a, my brother's bobble. Now my brother's got a big head back there. And so now, yeah, the, the I, I was when I was pulling video from John earlier, I realized like I've changed my background like 800 times. And now there's like random transformers back there. There's still baseball books back there. And um, Connor also want to mention that the Saginaw Valley, the Cardinals will take on Wayne state Friday through th- Tuesday. So that's actually, and mm-hmm. that's a good call. Both outstanding baseball programs. Wayne state has produced some major league talent. Uh, same Not thing with Saginaw Valley, the, or the mid cities, if you, uh, the tri, is it the tri, no, tri cities, mid cities, tri cities, yeah. Saginaw Valley or Saginaw Flint in Bay city. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. That's, those are, yeah. Yeah, maybe Midland. I don't know. Yeah, Midland. I maybe maybe Midland. Midland. I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Brandon, it's your neck of the woods. I mean, it used to be in your neck of the woods, right? No, I'm 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 mostly Kalamazoo, Southeast Michigan guy. I mean, I drive through there on the way up north, but you know, (laughs) I don't know. Maybe Bay City and and Saginaw do seem to get kind of lumped together. So maybe maybe they do mean Midland. I'm I'm not okay because I I know you. Yeah, because we were at Western Michigan for a while, right? You were in West Michigan or like the Kalamazoo area. That's right. Yeah, I lived in Kalamazoo for like twelve. 12 years from the mid nineties until is that during your... 08 or so. Yeah. It was that yeah. during your band so days, right? Time, so but like... um, everything else I'm just oh, passing you... through. Oh, yeah. Well, I was like band. going to Western creative writing. Yeah. I mean, a little bit mm-hmm. now, mostly, mostly I just supported friends. <laughs> I was never very good. Look at, look at these baby fingers. Like it's, it just wasn't going to help. Happen to me with <laughs> I've, got, I've got the same issue. I got, I got, got... I got Lou Reed's, Lou Reed's fingers, but they're even yeah. shorter. Yeah. I got short stubby. I have, Oh yeah, you do. Do. yeah. The yeah. hand size—it's weird. The palm size is fine, but the hand, the fingers yeah. are short. Yeah. I know yeah. it's it's a bummer. My my wife has these incredible long tapered fingers. I so guess like, man, smoker, right? if, if, if we can get Harrison these fingers, maybe he can pitch. And I think he has them. So, um, oh nice. I oh, looked nice. it up. Yeah, I looked it up. The Tri Cities in Michigan refers to two regions. Oh, one is Saginaw, Midland, and Bay City, uh, and the other is Grand Haven, Ferrysburg, and Spring Lake. Okay. Never heard of it. Side? I have no idea what that is. Yeah, I've Grand been to Grand Haven, but yeah. Yeah, Grand Haven's a cool Grand, town. Yeah, it's West Side of the State. Okay. So we're, we're doing a geography podcast here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we learned something in here, gentlemen. I did. Yeah. Know that. Yeah. Chris, yeah. Chris, if we're doing the drinking game, if we're doing the Morrissey Metrics drinking oh, game, that's right. Be, you got to drink. You got to drink six times there. Yeah. Oh, God. Chris, okay. you may, may mention a city name there. Every so. time I mention a city in Michigan, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, thank you Brandon's so much. Doing it. Good job. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Brandon is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go. So, all right. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. So let's uh, week. So week two, we'll be back next Monday recapping a full system of baseball. And we look forward to talking to you then for myself, Chris Brown and Brandon Day. And by the way, congratulations to Kurt, Mez- Kurt, who is now back in the editing game. He is now the chief editor in chief at Motor City Bengals. Oh, I didn't know. I, I didn't we even hear that. Have to talk about that after we're off the air. Oh, talk to you soon, uh, everybody. Have a good night. All right. Everybody. Good night, guys.